Now let's work with local and overall mass transfer coefficients. Actually, we will also include this concept of resistance, which we already studied before. And we're going to be talking about a gas absorption of a stream of gas, which contains certain amount of ammonia and water. This is example 3.4 from Principles and Modern Applications of Mass Transfer Operations by Jaime Benitez, second edition. And it states the follow. In an experimental study, and this is very important guys, you will typically hear or see a lot experimental data rather than theoretical concepts because unfortunately for these cases, correlations are not that reliable. Anyways, assuming that the experimental data is correct, then we hear about absorption of ammonia by water in a wetted wall column. So let it be, this is the column or the wall. We have a fluid going down, which should be water, our solvent. And we have a gas stream containing ammonia. And the water right here. The value of the overall mass transfer coefficient. How do I know this is overall? Well, this is uppercase, so we should assume that this is overall mass transfer coefficient. Was around or approximate 2.75 times to the minus 6 kilomole per meter square per second per kilopascal. So this is already telling us that we need to multiply by total pressure in order to calculate molar fractions. At one point in the column, so the interesting part right here is that this model should be available or valid through all the column. The composition of the gas and the liquid phases, respectively, are 8 and 0.115 mol percent. So these are not mole fractions, rather percentages of ammonia. So this is essentially bulk phase, 8% here, and bulk phase 0.115 here. We will need to then calculate the ones of the interface. The temperature was 300 Kelvin and the total pressure was 1 atmosphere, which I'm going to change already to kilopascals. 101. 85% of the total resistance to mass transfer was found to be in the gas phase. So we know that these will be essentially 85% versus 15% here. At 300 kelvins, ammonia water solutions uh, follow Henry's law, which is great, uh, all the way to 5% of ammonia. So we need to ensure that in the interface, we don't have a concentration greater than 5% mole. If this is true, then we will not be able to assume Henry's law. Maybe if we got something between 5 and 7%, it's still fine, but up or greater than 7% will be not convenient. The value of Henry's constant is 1.64. Since there are no units, I'm going to assume that this relates small fraction with small fraction in the vapor and liquid phases. Total pressure is again one atmosphere for this constant. And the obvious question will be calculate the flux individual field coefficients, which is Kx for the liquid phase and Ky for the vapor phase. And now calculate the interfacial concentration, which is way I way AI and XAI. So the values I was telling you about here. And the very first step will be, let us first verify for the coefficients given. I was telling you about KG, meaning that this is the overall mass transfer coefficient given in pressure. A little tip right here. If you see pressure down, means that you need to multiply by pressure. We are given, in fact, a pressure, which is one atmosphere or 101.3 kilopascals. In order to obtain Ky, overall mass transfer coefficient in molar fraction in the gas phase, I get this. Now it's very important that we can now relate. So probably you're wondering why I changed this already. I think it's convenient because we are going to have a lot of mole fractions. As you can see here, percentage of mole fractions. We are not given partial pressures. And the Henry's constant is typically given for fractions as well. So why not change it right now? Resistance. Of the gas phase shall be uh, divided by the total resistance of the two phases. This is what we saw previously. Or you can also see this that the resistance was given as follows. What I'm going to assume is that this is the 85% for the gas phase. So this is local, this is overall. And so easily I calculate the local mass transfer coefficient. I just solve for Ky lowercase 
which is right here, right here, substitute data, and 85. Of course, you should expect a little bit higher value here. Now that I have the, right now I have KY, KG, which are kind of interchangeably, and the lower or upper, uh, sorry, lower case KY, which is local. So this overall local. For the local mass transfer coefficient, which I need from A, as you can see here, I need KX. Now that I have KY uh, lowercase, it's easier if I use this equation, guys. I have this one, this one, and M, which is the equilibrium relationship. So I just need to solve for KX. I do this by sending this subtracting, then substitute data. You will see that this will be 15, which is, of course, the resistance in the liquid phase. And then I keep solving substitute for M, KY, and 15. And I get my local mass transfer coefficient in the liquid phase. So I'm happy we get the two local mass transfer coefficients, liquid and gas phase. Now, solution B. We can now calculate the equilibrium concentration for the vapor. Remember, what we want to calculate is the flux in the gas phase, which we already know that is the same as the flux in the liquid phase then relate to the interface conditions for both y and x. For this, the very first approach will be calculate the molar flux. So we have molar composition in the bulk phase, yes. Do we have the conditions in the interface? No. Do we have a concentration? Well, technically you don't have anything other than calculate the equilibrium conditions, meaning that we need to use the overall mass transfer coefficient, which fortunately for us, we do have it. So substituting data, this is the 8% we were talking about, and this is the percentage in the uh, interface, which is already lower than 1%, so we can assure that for the liquid phase, most likely the Henry's law constant uh, the concept of 5% is still valid. I perform this equation, I get NAG, which I know is the same as NAL. Anyways, what I want to do here is calculate this part right here, which we don't have, is the interface mass transfer, uh, sorry, the interface concentration in the gas phase. So I could substitute here, here, and here, and solve for this one right here, or I can solve this one first. So what I do is send this dividing, and then I send this subtracting, and because this has a negative sign, this becomes positive, and this becomes negative. Substituting data, this I obtain it here, what is it? NAG is right here, wait for it. No, sorry, this is NAG here. Substitute here, substitute this one right here, and this one right here, I get YAG, sorry, this is A. The equilibrium condition is 0 0.0136. So this is in the interface. This will be this point. And if this is true, guys, we can keep going and get the liquid phase, which is flux of liquid phase must be equal to the gas phase. And if this is true, I can apply my model for liquids. Kx, then I will need interface, which of course I'm doing purposely because I want to calculate this. And this is given. We already know this is 0 0.115%, which is 1.15 times 10 to the minus 3. I got Kx, which we calculated already, and the molar flux, which is constant for the gas and liquid phase. I am literally just solving for this. This will be this divided by this plus this value. And I get the interface value 8.3 times 10 to the minus 3, which will be something around here. And remember that the maximum amount was 5%. And before we even continue, guys, I told you that we need to know this, but if you know that the bulk phase e was at 0.11% and the interface was at 0. Point, uh, something around 8%, of course, Henry's law is valid. Therefore, the use of M was correct. For now, we have all fluxes, all interface conditions, and I would recommend you guys, if you want to, verify the flux of G and L using all the conditions that we have. Interfaces, bulk faces, and equilibrium ones. 
And this is it for mass transfer resistance, overall mass transfer coefficient, and local mass transfer coefficient.